uh, the, the ending to that conversation is perfect to segue into our next guest, who is a, another independent journalist who has been such an amazing supporter of Julian Assange, who has never given up speaking about um, injustice of all kinds and has been an incredible inspiration to other independent journalists. And I am, of course, speaking about Caitlin Johnstone. The incredible Caitlin Johnstone is here with us now. Welcome, Caitlin. You're here. Hi. Hi. So great to see you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing this. You guys have done such a wonderful job. It's been so good. Like, you know, I, I really feel like it's uh, uh, it, it, it makes a community of us, which is, is, is another great thing. It's horrible that we have to do this and that we're two months in now, is it, that uh, um, Julian has, you know, been uh, separated from the world, you know, in, in virtual uh isolation but um it's it's also a good thing that we we're talking and that we're creating this kind of community uh and that we're reassuring each other that what we're seeing is is really as pernicious as it as it seems to be Absolutely. No, and I'm so grateful for all of the panelists, including yourself, who have taken the time to be part of this effort. And it's been really inspiring to see, you know, all of these different views and, and backgrounds represented um, in, in just defying the ideological separation that is so deep and so divisive nowadays in order to uh, support Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. So that's... Well, isn't that really, great? Yeah. They're... Yeah. But I was wondering, so what what do you think? I, I know that you've been covering a number of really important topics lately, like the Scripple case and a number of, you know, just issues that you've been really, really uh, keen on covering. But what what are your thoughts on the recent developments, basically since the first vigil? Because you did obviously participate in that first vigil. Um, what are your thoughts on the events since then, since, since the last time that we all spoke on this stream? Well, I can't help but notice that the you know they silenced him, and uh, the propaganda machine really started to to hit its straps. It um, some really weird stuff has been happening, and we haven't had Julian's voice or um, you know because WikiLeaks it's a it's a huge publication. It goes back you know there's so many things, um, and to have him there you know like pointing us to the relevant WikiLeaks when um, uh, it has been, it's been a real loss. Just, and also to have his kind of philosophical position, he's a great thinker uh, and he really does have like a, a fantastic knowledge of the landscape of what we're looking at, this inverted totalitarianism, you know, that isn't obvious. It's not like the there's, we're not, there's no tanks in the street, but uh, it's, totalitarianism with a guy smiley face you know um and he's really good at at showing the different outlines of of where power sits and how it how it works so yeah i feel it's incredibly disappointing but also uh you know probably not a coincidence that uh we've had in the past two months, you know, the Skripal case, um, but also uh, Babchenko just recently. There's <laughs> one thing after another of uh, just, like, <laughs> weird propaganda. Yeah. And and the sun shines, you know, he, he shines a light on propaganda. That's basically he's just a weapon to, to open up the cracks uh, of the propaganda machine. If you control the narrative, you control the world, which is why they hate Julian Assange, because he is constantly throwing shade on their narratives. Um, and that's why he's so important. Absolutely. And it's incredible the effectiveness that he has shown in all of those areas. But I, I have read your reporting on the Scripple uh, issue and I, I noticed uh, what, what you're describing about the ridiculous level of propaganda. I remember that you wrote that they have changed the narrative itself. Like so many times they've changed the story. Um, I, ca I cannot imagine the, w the different ways that Julian would be ripping that to shreds right now if he could, if he could speak about <laughs> yeah. it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm mocking it, you know, mocking yeah. it. I think that's important. Like, you know, my vibe is that this will all fall apart uh, with not a gunshot but a giggle um, and the script part goes with just a farce. It's just a Monty Python-esque bullshit. I mean, you, you could almost imagine Mr Bean being, you know, at the centre of the involvement of it. It's just so ridiculous. But, um, 
Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, like I was just watching you uh, with Lee Camp before, you know, and Jimmy Dore and comedians, etc. cetera, um, throwing that mockery upon the, um, upon these farcical narratives that we're expected to believe. Like, you know, we're, we're expected to sit there and go, oh, yes, oh, yes, very serious. Oh, the deadly Novichok was in the cereal. No, it wasn't in the cereal. No, it was on the car door now. No, it's not on the car door. Yeah, no, 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 it was on It was on the front door. No, it was in the vent. It was in the vent. Because these stories get falling apart every <laughs> day. But we, you know, and there were people just sitting there nodding along, pretending like this was real and serious and like just, and, and ever since then, you know, on the royal wedding, they released Sergey. He, he, so that where everyone else is, you know, talking about her Meghan Markle's dress, but uh, they, they quietly released him. And um, it is just, yeah, he would have a lot of fun, I'm sure. So that's disappointing. The thing is, he doesn't even probably know that these things are going on. And I think that's a horrible, like, uh, injustice as well, that he's not here following along what's going on, you know. He's two months behind in the news stream and, and um, that's, that's for someone like him who has devoted his life to understanding uh, these narratives and how they, uh, how they uh, bolster power, it's... Um, that's one of the many, many crimes that's being committed right now is that he's being taken away access from his, you know, his vocation, his his life purpose. He's a very important person to humanity. And I think at some point, like, you know, we're going to collectively realise that and I hope it's uh, not in the too far future, but he will be thought of as, as you know, a Nelson Mandela. And um, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and that that will be that will be you know it, it will say something about us as humans, as individual humans, where we stood in this, and how gullible we are, and how suggestible we are to the mainstream media narratives, and um, how easily led we can be by the nose. You know, like all oh, this. Oh, he's a rapist. I think I don't know. Someone told me that in the pub. I'm pretty sure. Like, you know, we we. It's showing us up as humans and he is showing up. He is, you know, proving his thesis just by existing. Like his, if he would, Julian Assange wouldn't exist if the democracy that we purport to be under was as free and, you know, as transparent as we're, we're led to believe. He wouldn't need to exist. You know, his publications, they would be redundant. No one would want to read them because we would have an open and transparent government. We would know what's going on. There would be nothing to leak. The, his very existence proves his thesis. And the way that the, he has been uh, persecuted, uh, you know, just shows up more and more how deeply evil these fuckers are and how how much they they will protect their power structures and how much they consider the narrative the power structure that they need to protect you know um, and they will do so to to great lengths um, and and look very vicious while doing it risk you know risk being found out because all this is this is just being held together by propaganda as well. The, the reason that people aren't standing up in arms against Julian Assange is that they, they've, you know, there's these low-key smears that are often about whether or not, like, he's a good house guest, whether or not he cleans up after himself or whatever. Like, like you're, you're allowed to, you know, like, detain someone for seven years because he doesn't pick up his socks. Like, this is the level. We don't even have any delineations. We don't judge things anymore. We're just like, oh, well, you know, I, I hear he's a bit smelly or whatever. Yeah, that, that's not a reason to detain someone for seven years. Like, that's not a reason, okay? So, yeah, but that's that's the way that they, meant, you know, they massage these narratives so that people are just kind of like, oh, well, you know, maybe he's not... He's not the hero that everyone thought he was or whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to torture people. In a free society, we shouldn't be allowed to, to silence someone simply for telling the truth. That is wrong. <laughs> That's absolutely wrong. And I don't care what you think about his personal hygiene. Exactly. Well, and that's the level. And when we, we just mentioned earlier the, the role of comedians in exposing so much of this effectively, 
you're completely right in saying that that's uh, this level of propaganda, the the uh, the propaganda narratives about uh, personal hygiene, these ridiculous smears, they really only belong in comedy in some ways. I mean, it's almost impossible yeah, to address yeah. them without laughing and making it into a joke. So that makes a lot of right. sense in that way. But I was wondering yeah. um, about your your recent article that you wrote on uh, Moreno basically punishing Julian Assange for doing his job as a journalist. And I was wondering if you could speak about that to our audience a little bit for any of them who haven't read your piece uh, about what you covered in that article. Right. So Lennon Moreno, he's the president of Ecuador, and he's been involved very much in these discussions about whether or not uh, Assange should have internet access. Um, you know, we've been told that it was because of his tweet about uh, the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, sorry, the Catalonian uh, incident. Yes, yes. Because um, he was very, very strongly pro uh, their independence and um so you know that of course plays into the uh, the the Ecuador has a history of you know Spanish uh, colonialism etc. Um, so there would be ties there, I guess, to the Western Empire. But uh, uh, Lynn Moreno was um, he was voted in on the idea. He was the guy that we were all you know cheering for because we thought he was gonna, the the one who was going to protect Assange. There was another guy who was. Uh, he was like, oh, we're going to kick him out. So we're all excited when he got in. But um, there has been a lot of pressure. Uh, there's, you know, the Venezuelan example must be playing on his mind. There have been envoys to Quito, uh, the capital there, to uh, get a the, the um, US um, a military station up and running again because that, that had been um, dismantled, uh, and that's they've been successful on that. I just think he's under a lot of pressure. So uh, uh, I don't actually blame him. I still blame the Western Empire for putting that pressure on him. Like, how ridiculous. Just stop it. Like, just get, get better at, you know, stop hiding from us. Stop telling us lies all the time and, and start acting like the thing that you pretend you're going to be and then you wouldn't have to hide Julian Assange in a closet. Like we would just just be better, be better people. Um, yeah, so Moreno, you know, he's, um, he's, he's stated that Assange has three choices basically. He can remain as he is, you know, without internet access, so basically silenced. He can shut up. He can have internet access, or but he's not allowed to speak about political things. He's not actually allowed to do journalism. He's not allowed to be Julian Assange. He can, he, I guess, you know, retweet mole caps or something. I'm not sure what they think he's going to do. Like that's his only. That's the thing he is. That's his interest. That's what he is. Um, so basically, you know, he can have internet access, but he can't he has to shut up as well. Um, or he steps outside the, the embassy and we know from the actions and, you know, from from the clues that uh, they will whisk him away, extradite him to the US and we will not see him again, so they will shut him up. So he's got three, three choices there. He can either be quiet, be quiet or be quiet. So we're in a really dodgy position right now. It's touch and go. We need to... Um, we need a miracle, really. Or we need to, you know, demand that um, the Australian government step up would be great. That would be really fantastic uh, and take back their um, their guy or our guy. Uh, well, I, I know that from the Freedom of Information Act uh, docs that uh, Kelly Tranter, their old WikiLeaks lawyer, got, uh, that the Australian government has been, it's been very... Um, obtuse about how uh, it speaks about uh, Julian Assange. You know, it's, it never really makes a statement about um, whether we support him or not or whatever. So that it's been very hard to understand, like, what exactly they have against him and why they don't do anything. Uh, and it seems like internally the, the, the government has decided that, well, did decide that, the Swedish charges, it would be an interruption of the Sweden's sovereignty to, to intercede when there were still charges from Sweden. 
But of course, they've since been dropped. So there's no reason at all for the Australian government not to step in at this point. And Greg Barnes made that point, the Sydney Morning Herald, a couple of days ago, which um, and he was on the vigil, wasn't he? So Yeah, we were privileged enough to have him speak and say exactly that and, and discuss that issue about the lack of support from the Australian government. But he also was uh, speaking about, or we asked him a little bit about uh, the activism that is happening in Australia. I know that WikiLeaks and I believe it was World Socialist website that reported it, that there was a lot of youth uh, organisations that were, uh, you know, doing demonstrations in support of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. So uh, that, that was at least one encouraging um, piece of news to see that. But obviously it has to be stepped up a lot more to be effective. Um, do you see that happen right. in Australia? Do you think that in Australia there is uh, an impetus in the public to support Julian right now? Or have they forgotten him in some way? Um, honestly, uh, no. I, it, it feels very, very quiet here and, like, people really don't know what to do or say about it because it says very bad things about us as a country and about our sovereignty and about our, you know, our backbone. Um, people just don't want to talk about it, you know. So I, even when I bring it up or whatever, they it's, it's, they don't want to talk about it. It's going to be a, 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 a rally in a couple of weeks' time in Melbourne that I'll be at. Um but, yeah, I think, you know, we've known for a long time, Australians have known that we're just basically a vassal state of the US. And um, it's embarrassing. <laughs> so it is, and we don't seem to be able to do anything about it. You know, the Iraq war was like giant, like a huge embarrassment, I think, to, to Australians. Like uh, I was one of the... The almost a million people, I think, marched in Australia against the Iraq War. It was like 400,000 or something in, in Melbourne. And uh, it was a huge, huge, huge backlash against that. But nothing, we couldn't do anything about it. They, they just marched us along with the US anyway. So um, when these topics come up, we're getting less and less... Um, vocal about it I guess but also um yeah it's just hugely embarrassing to have like you know a, an Australian citizen um be persecuted like that with no backlash from our government no statements just silence you know embarrassed silence is awful and the and the deletion of his passport too. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible they would go to that length as well. But um, given that that kind of like apathy that you're describing in the, the in the just the cultural milieu of Australia right now, um, I want to ask what led you to become such a, an amazing, incredible um, voice for independent thought. Like, what what encouraged you to step outside the box in your reporting as a journalist rather than just taking the safe option that so many journalists take? and just taking a check and, you know, tell, uh, speaking the script that you're given, et cetera, et cetera. What, what was, I guess, the, the light switch that flicked for you um, to put you on the path that brought you to where you are today with your independent journalism? Well, I like a lot of, like I did my degree back in 2000 um, and a lot of, like a lot of journalism degree graduates, I realised that I wasn't going to be able to do anything like I was probably going to spend a couple of years regurgitating AP and uh, and then if I was lucky, maybe 20 years down the track I might be able to do something. Um, it just seemed like a dead-end job and that if, you know, it was obvious from that point that, like, you don't make, you don't make a lot of money uh, the, and the way to make money is to just be like a mouthpiece for the establishment, which is obviously not what I wanted to do. And I'd rather do anything but that. Like anything, I don't. I didn't want to use my talents to, for in the service of empire, you know. Um, like I'd, I'd rather do marketing or anything else, anything else. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't go into journalism after my degree. I, I, you know, I had two little kids as well, and it just didn't seem like the opportunities that I believed were there when I started my degree were actually viable. So. Um, you know, what are we, 20 years nearly on, 18 years now, and, um, and my kids are grown and, uh, and I, there is this 
biological impulse, I think, that a lot of people feel, whether or not they're journalists, co comedians, uh, whatever, that we need to do something now about where we're at, uh, this the corporatocracy, the capitalism, the, you know, the, the way that we are as a species right now is not sustainable. We have these systems in place that are leading us to our own extinction, you know, and we need to do something about that. Uh, and, and like, so there was this kind of perfect storm for me where uh, it was it became possible to become an independent journalist. Like you didn't have to go into a uh, a regular newspaper or a TV or whatever radio. You could you could just start. Um, you got a little gig at Inquisitor, and you know, um, and I went from there. And I found like I was just writing kind of general reportage or whatever, and doing these opinion pieces um, that were getting a lot of traction. And uh, uh, when they they just they asked me not to do so many opinion pieces or, and to be so strident <laughs> in my views, um, I decided to take the leap. You know, because why not? Like I'd rather I'd rather write what I want to write and have a day job as well. If you know, if it comes down to that, I'll go and work in Macca's. Like uh, uh, if if that's what has to happen. Um, but I, I really think we need to do something here. And that's what, I mean, we all, I don't think, I think Julian Assange is kind of a lightning rod for that as well. He's the lightning rod for the assholes, but he's also been a lightning rod for those who see that something needs to be done and the, the greatest weapon we have is attacking the propaganda machine that keeps everything in place. The whole thing is just a giant narrative and that if we believe it, then we just keep going along, we keep sucking on the same teeth and, you know, it's the resources of our, our planet are going to run out or we're going to blow ourselves up. One of the two is going to happen at some point. Um and, yeah, we really need to step up and, and start throwing some shade on those narratives uh, and getting people to see what's really going on. Absolutely. And uh, from the beginning of your um, kind of venture into independent journalism, you've consistently covered WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. And as a, a massive fan of yours, I've, I remember when you made the announcement that you were jumping into independent journalism as opposed to writing for Inquisitor. And um, I think that type of courage that you've shown as an independent journalist has inspired other people to become their own journalists as well. And I think that's something you've advocated as, as something people should do in, in your articles. So I didn't know if you wanted to speak on that and how people can use that um, at a small level to help uh, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks right now. Oh, yeah, I absolutely think that that's where it's at, you know, and um, I was so pleased to see you really take on that as well. Like, you know, this is, yeah, it's really exciting to me how many uh, diverse voices we have and how that's growing and I really love it when I, you know, on Facebook or whatever, people, someone will say to me, I think it's about time I started writing, um, <clears throat> which is just, yeah, just fantastic. Um, and... I just really want people to know that we can do this and that it's, uh, you know, and that we that we must do this. And like I heard Lee Camp say before, you know, it might sound like earnest and sincere and it's not very cool, you know, to, to want to change the world, but we actually have to want to change the world like, in order to do that. Um, and it's okay, like, you know, I, I don't know if we can make it cool, but like, but well, let's just do it. Let's just do it because we can. And um, yeah, there's this learned hopelessness, I think, uh, amongst lefties especially, uh, that we're, you know, we're just inert and that uh, I, I attacked that a lot during the Bernie campaign. Like there was this kind of, yeah, well, but, you know, He's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. Unicorns. But Unicorns. He didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't get it. But the, you don't get anywhere if you don't hit all the way through. There's there's no point. Like, you know, they've won if you just lay down and die already, if you just curl up into a ball. Like, they have won. So, yeah, get up and start fighting. Um, and I know that people, like, you know, find it... I mean, it's difficult. Like Twitter will 
shut you down, Facebook, etc. Like, you know, you'll get two likes, <laughs> you know, of the same two people that you always get the same likes from or whatever. But you don't know how many people are, are viewing that, how many screens that has has gone across and just how much of an impact you're having day after day. Just keep at it like, and, and keep finding different angles to say it. Keep um, pushing your creativity towards it, your artistry before, towards it, you know, get um, find different metaphors to show what's going on um, and yeah, just get creative and it is all making a difference. I swear to God it's making a difference. So, um, yeah, and I, I think also like you, they, I saw, I can't remember, maybe it was Nico? Or Kiriko, oh, yeah, that that writing letters helps yes. a lot. Yes. Um, you so, know, uh, John Kiriko and Kieran. Uh, I was going to say John Kiriko and Kieran O'Reilly both both emphasized that, and they had both had their uh, they both spoke from their experiences of being imprisoned, and so that was a major, um, you know, subject that we've talked about. And and please, yeah, if you have any thoughts on that, that would be fantastic to hear about them about the power right. of just writing a letter to Julian. And what that can do yeah sit down write a letter post it well you know take a screen like take a photo of it put it on your facebook put it on your twitter um and uh yeah just just get the information to to those in in power and it's not like they're they you know they're no they're not getting lobbied by people like us um there's no lobbying group for us you know, we are our own lobbying group. So be your own lobbying group. Um, there's a organisation in Australia called Get Up, which um, uh, is a progressive lobbying group or whatever. Um, we can be kind of an ad hoc Get Up sort of group where you just um, take your initiative, write your write the letters and stuff, get a conversation going, get on the phone. We all know that that actually does make a difference because, you know, the squeaky wheel does get the grease, like, in the end. Um, and they, yeah, and, and people will know that not only are you trying to talk to them, but you're talking to your, to their constituents. You're in their, you know, their, their voting pool um, and it's important for them to at least look like they've listened. Uh, and over time, you know, they, that, that starts to, to work into their um, narrative as well. So, yeah. Uh, writing letters is a really good way of doing things. Absolutely. And name. Yes, yes, that's really effective. I mean, it's it's surprising the way that a simple cat meme can can spread like wildfire and really take an actually really important, serious message to so many people. Mm. But uh, Right. Absolutely. And I, I really liked the fact that you just pointed out how uh, the, the way in which we have to be our own advocates because there's nobody speaking for us, lobbying for us. But Wiki, uh, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange are, are, is like the most unique organization and individual who does speak and advocate for everyone and protect us from the harms of our own government, or maybe not protect us, but reveal those harms to us. And so in that way, they, they are really um, a last bastion of truth for the public. And I don't know if you, if you just wanted to expand, uh, expound a little bit on the importance of WikiLeaks and the importance of Julian Assange's work for the public interest, as opposed to this machine right. that we all know is against them. Right. Well, it's not just important for us as the readers who who mm. who you know are reading this stuff. It's also important for people who are working in these institutions and seeing what's going on and thinking, "Holy fucking shit! Someone needs to do something. We can't do. We can't keep doing this. This is terrible." Um, and it gives them a, like a, a a place to go that is secure, where they can leak documents and alert humanity to the evil that is being done behind closed doors and we can we, we then have a chance to do something about it but you know as citizens who um who are working in these places it's also incredibly important to know that you can leak to and and get attention on this stuff and not put yourself in danger wikileaks is you know a, a really great record of protecting its sources um and verifying you know the 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 data as well like um so yeah it's 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 fantastic i can't state how important it has been it has been at the um behind every 
important move towards light uh, that I know of since its inception. You know, there's 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 a WikiLeaks for everything, <laughs> and <laughs> um, you know, it's 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 basically really rattling the cages of of those who are like you know. Um, in power, but also those who are asleep and, and not understanding how their daily lives are being sabotaged by these, uh, these you know, insane plutocrats who will just suck the resources from the world and put us all on edge, you know, for their, with their war propaganda, but also like, you know, with uh, just uh, sabotaging our, um, our progress as a species to be able to do something about you know the the big issues of our time we can't do anything because we don't have a voice anymore our vote literally doesn't mean anything when money equals power so um yeah it's a they're really they're so important i think they're so important and it, they're really worth fighting for and i think uh, that history will bear us out on that I, I couldn't agree more. I think that that is absolutely correct. Uh, un unless it's uh, to to idolize him in, in a sanitized sense, which seems to happen to all of the figures like uh, like Martin Luther King and other amazing, um, you know, activists whose history is altered so that the establishment isn't offended by their message. And so I hope I hope that no matter what the outcome is with Julian Assange, that that isn't allowed to happen either. Oh, yeah, you're so true about that. Like Martin Luther King would be, I mean, yeah, the, the things that are that are sold in his name are just makes you sick. It really does. Like for a man that was, you know, persecuted by the FBI um, and then for the FBI to turn around and use his words like as some sort of selling point, like, oh, 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 it grosses me out. It's so disgusting. Like, oh, get off him. Like, no, go away. Like, you know, they, they, they did everything they could to silence that, that great man. Um, and, you know, for them to, to, to try and use him, that's just how evil do you have to be? Anyway, yeah, yeah, really. So I, you're right. They will. They and that they're masters at this narrative switch. That suddenly, um, Assange will be allowed to be a hero, like you know, but um, but only in the way that sells cars. Exactly. Exactly. They they take the face off of these amazing activists and they put them on the same machine those activists were fighting against. It's just the most <laughs> evil. It's like the 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 reproduction of these of of these amazing human beings as like um sellable objects that they can just use at their disposal um what do you think is some are, are some of the points that are not talked about enough with about wikileaks and julian assange and you know whether it's about the impact of their work or about the extremity of the way that they are um abused by government and by state uh you know the unelected power structure that sort of rules the planet through the u.s um, what do you think is not spoken about either in independent media or in, in legacy media um, these days about Julian Assange and WikiLeaks? Well, I think, I mean, their importance in, in, in bringing light to the vampires, you know, is, is has, um, what, what I try to, to talk about a lot as much as I possibly can is the propaganda around Julian Assange and um, how that plays into it. You know, he's being uh, abused by the weapon that he is trying to destroy. And um, yeah, so, th but, uh, but that works into the brainwashing of us as like, you know, of the, the way that psyops work on humans. And that's where it can, you know, the hopelessness can set in when your, your friends and family uh, just repeating that he can leave whenever he wants, he can leave whenever he wants, he can leave whenever he wants, line or whatever they, they you know, uh, propagating at the time. Um, there's this cognitive dissonance that, that, that people have. You know, they don't want to know exactly the, the danger that we're in and that, uh, you know, that there is no one in, in charge here that we can trust. There is no one who has our best interests in mind. There are only people who are very self-interested in charge and, you know, their whole 
they're so stupid like and they 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 don't even care they you know they just think oh well I'll just fly to Mars if it gets too bad I'll just go to Mars that's their whole solution for everything all these rich assholes so yeah the cognitive dissonance that comes in I think when people try and keep those those thoughts segmented from from who Julian Assange is and and what his actions show him to be you know when uh when you look at when you zoom out and see what is happening to Julian Assange he is being held silent in a small room he's jailed basically um by extremely powerful people and that's the fact of what is happening everything else is just story over that overloading that um if you can get people to see the actions of what is happening aside from the the narratives that they're being fed then they they may be able to break through that cognitive dissonance and and see what's really going on and so that's something that i kind of push a lot at um there was a detective caroline good who said some awful things to julian's mother about him now she has you know she was a detective in the UK she's now retired but she was involved in the Snowden case she was also involved in uh in getting Glenn Greenwald's uh husband um nabbed on those awful anti-terrorism laws they, they took his stuff off him I don't know if you remember that you know she's she was behind a lot of those things and then she goes on Twitter in one tweet she's talking about how um you know the how vile people are and how poisonous the dialogue is and how how we need to be compassionate towards each other and how like you know uh, that compassion is the only way that we're going to see our way through this she she says that in one tweet basically the next tweet she's at julian assange's mum talking about what a smelly boy he is so like you know being this you know how did you let him be the smelly boy in class or something like that this really vicious poisonous you know like just prod at his mother um which belied everything that she had just said in her previous tweet and that's that's what i think i would like people to kind of like find where that is in themselves where they're trying they're keeping that that separated from themselves you know that, that their actions are separate um from what they would like their 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 words to be like you know what what the story about themselves is i think yeah, you'll find that in ourselves as well yeah we i think there's definitely a gap between everyone's sense of who they are and the actual reality of who they are i think that's really common for most people but it's definitely important that we address that and make sure that we are sort of walking our talk um and i mm. i just want to take a moment you mentioned the viciousness of the attacks against julian assange and I think that that's a, a great segue into some news I have for you all about the current status of the website. Uh, the Unity doc, uh, unity4j.com website is down right now. Um, it, we are not sure exactly what happened. Um, one tweet from an anonymous account has claimed responsibility for taking the site down, which is really sad and, and pretty pathetic to see. Uh, our tech people are working really hard on restoring the site. And I just want to ask you if you could please... Uh, uh, use the the YouTube watch link, uh, the stream link when you share Unity 4J tweets. Um, use the hashtag Unity 4J and keep keep tweeting and retweeting the watch link. And I will let you know as soon as the site is back up and running. And I think Caitlin, that this goes to exactly. The, I, I, and I also want to add before I go back to you though that uh, Susie m mentioned last night that we were having some censorship issues on Twitter. That the Unity 4J actual handle, the the Twitter account was being censored, shadow banned, and the the hashtag, of course was completely suppressed. So um, I think that all of this goes to what you were just saying about the viciousness of these attacks against anyone. It doesn't matter if it's Julian Assange's mother, if it, the brilliant, amazing Christine Assange. It doesn't matter if it's just a supportive, unified group of people from a diverse set of backgrounds that are just coming together to be positive and support WikiLeaks. Regardless, you get attacked and you get you know, uh, smeared in some way or another. So I think that that is such a such a constant with anyone who supports WikiLeaks. And it belies their their thesis, doesn't it? Oh, look, yeah, we don't care. We don't care. You know, like, you, he's a free democracy. He can leave wherever he wants. 
wants. He can leave whatever he wants. And yet you are so viciously attacked if you ever even try to support him. Like, uh -huh, excuse me, your actions are belying your real intentions. There. They put so much energy, so much money and effort into silencing not just him but the people who support him. And so what's going on there? Why would you do that? Oh, you don't really care? You know, I call triggered. You are bloody triggered. And they will, they, they just throw everything that they have. So every time they do that, they are proving Julian Assange's thesis correct. They are absolutely proving it. And, um, yeah, they can't even help themselves. They just keep doing it anyway. So, yeah, I'm really sad about the, the website, but it is not surprising. My own yeah. website is down right now. That is so typical, and, and they, it would go down right as we're speaking to you. Of course, uh, I think that mm -hmm. this is really an indication that not only that that not only that WikiLeaks is so effective, and Julian Assange is obviously such such an effective voice that he's been silenced, but I think it, it you know I think it reflects on us as as this vigil and as this stream continues uh doing the right thing and that you know in some weird way like you said it's like validation that you're on the right track and it really yeah. I, I hope that what people take from this type of censorship and attack is that yes guys we're doing the right thing let's do it more like let's let's get more into it and and work harder and and keep doing more of exactly what we're doing because obviously it's correct when we received received tax like that that's the only way i can see to to deal with that type of uh censorship an attack uh, as a result of supporting WikiLeaks. Oh, yeah, in some ways, I think that um, doing real journalism is a game of hot or colder. And, you know, that the closer you get to the target, the more flack you will take. So goes the adage. Uh, it's absolutely true. Like, you know, like, that's absolutely true. Like, I know, like, that, yeah, that I'm onto something when something gets, especially when it's particularly surprising. And he's like, why don't you want me to talk about that? That's when you should be talking more about it. That's always my, my um, yeah, my flag to just take one more step forward <laughs> to see whether I get the same reaction or worse. Um, yeah, I, th I think, yeah, it's a, it's a really good sign that we're, we're absolutely doing something real here. And I implore everyone just to go ahead and do something real. We're on the right track here. This is where we need to be. We need to be, you know, if we can get Julian Assange out, that will be a great win for humanity as a species and it will be a, a liberation for us as well. So we, um, I really believe that, you know, he is, he's that important and what he represents is that important. Um, this, he is a... He is the man of the times, I think. Absolutely. I can't, I can't agree with you more on the, the sense that humanity would benefit as a complete whole from Julian Assange being not only reconnected to the outside world, but freed. Um, and, and that's definitely the spirit we're trying to bring to this vigil is that this is not about, and, and as you, you are saying, it's not even, it's not about, you know, what side of politics you're on in the U S it's not about the side of politics that you're on in the UK or the EU. This is about, humanity as a whole um you know praise you know are appreciating truth above ideology and obviously wikileaks and julian assange are the biggest truth tellers on the planet right now and so that goes exactly to what you're talking about about the benefit to all of us uh when when they are supported and when they win in their fight against the establishment um is we've got about uh 10 minutes or so left in the segment what what do you think uh, people should know either about your, uh, you know, ongoing efforts uh, for Julian Assange, what they should do going forward or any other thoughts that you feel like we haven't covered that you wanted to talk about um, during the stream? Well, just to your point about political, you know, I think it's been very interesting and that WikiLeaks has kind of shaken, shaken people loose. Um, that those of us who are really interested in just the truth, whether or not it, it backs our guy or our woman or whatever, um, who, you know, don't care, like, if, if, if the lies come undone and it turns out that, the, the, that your tribe was at fault or whatever, I don't care about that. I just want, I just want the truth, you know, and that's, that's the way that WikiLeaks is uh, by, you know, they were championed by the left, but as soon as... Um, they started attacking, you know, as, as soon as the leaks came out and, and made the left look not so good, you start to see who is self-interested and not who is higher interested. 
Like, yeah. you know, it's it it's a bit of pill to swallow. I get it. Like, you know, you've 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 loved someone, you know, uh, like I think we've all had a little love affair with Obama at some point, like, you know, and then to find out that he's this gruesome bloody animal that like oh that that he's just, you know, at the depths of um he's doing exactly what they've all done. Bush. Um, and, you know, Clinton, uh, et cetera, where they, they go before him. So, yeah, it's just to find out who Obama um, represents and who he was working for was was devastating, I think. I mean, it was devastating to me um, because I really had a lot of hope and that, that he was going to be the guy who was going to turn this all around for us. So, yeah, I get it. I get it. But, but we've got to kind of allow this um, to... We really do have to to get uh, to to push forward to towards truth, and that's what WikiLeaks does. It reveals the truth about all of our institutions and the propaganda falls, and those that you know the tribalness um, are falls. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for being with us. I, I we have a few minutes left. We're not done yet, so I'm going to um, look through chat and see what see what the response is is like. Um, from our uh, audience members who uh, I hope will have some questions for you. Um, I really enjoy it when the audience has questions for our guests and they haven't really much today, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep prodding them about it until they <laughs> ask some questions. So <laughs> I'm going to look through right now to see what we have. And also um, as I do that, I'm also, uh, I've gotten, I've become aware that uh, in connection with the site going down, apparently it looks like um, a, a number of our panelists have also been doxxed today. Um, it was just completely uh, disgusting and devastating for them. And I think that that really, it shows again what Caitlin was just talking about as far as the viciousness of the opposition towards uh, su any support yeah. for Julian Assange. It's just absolutely, um, it just reveals their own nature more than anything about uh, this vigil itself. Right. That's awful. Absolutely awful. Definitely. And so I'm getting a question from Seamus saying, how did Caitlin start writing? So what inspired you to write? I mean, we, we've talked about the beginning of your uh, career as a journalist and, and what motivated you to kind of go into independent journalism. But what I think what Seamus is getting at is what, you know, first motivated you to actually write as a, a talent and a skill set. Oh, right. Uh, my, uh, my family's a journalism family and so we were all expected to write um so yeah I uh uh you know from when I was uh 12 or something I used to help my dad with the he, he would write um the children's pages of a puffin um uh, magazine and I would help him write that so uh yeah I've always written um and I've always wanted to write what I'm writing right now uh, just it's been the, the you know you just haven't had the opportunity like the internet has opened up the opportunity for so many of us to to uh, to get down and um, and dirty and actually uh, you, you know say the things that we are seeing and and say them unequivocally without any apologies um, and yeah so it really was the, the birth of the internet that I felt like that I was able to. Uh, to write what I really wanted to write and not write for people, which is, I think, a very important distinction. Well, I think that answers that question beautifully. Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm checking now again for chat to see if anybody has asked any more questions. Guys, this is like last call. If you have any questions for Caitlin, then write them right now in chat so that I can ask them. Because as I've said before in this whole uh, stream, I, you know, I want to almost like collaborate with you all and have you participate in this stream, in this vigil, and and get your questions answered of all of our panelists if that's abs if that's possible. So. So I'm seeing some comments on how wonderful they think Caitlin is and how wonderful they think the whole vigil is. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. So Caitlin, what, I guess as a final thought, um, what do you see moving forward for Julian Assange? What do you see in the future of this situation? I, I'm not asking you to be falsely hopeful or, you know, deeply pessimistic, but, but what do you see in the, the next couple of months in this situation? Well, I, I don't think that we can go back to sleep. 
you know. I, I don't think that we can unsee the things that we've seen, that WikiLeaks have shown us, but also that the persecution of Julian Assange has shown us. Um, and I think that, you know, as we move forward uh, and try to get him out of there, uh, we will we'll see more and more things that will shock and terrify us and um, embolden us to go further. So I, I am hopeful. Um, I do think that the, the only way that uh, this can, you know, that the, 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 it can't go back in the box. This rabbit cannot go back in the box. We've seen it. Um, and I, uh, and there's no way that there's, you know, there, we are too many, there is a tipping point. There are too many of us now. We cannot be silenced. Um, and I think that uh, he, his liberation will be a one way or another. But, um, but yeah, we need to, to commit totally to hitting all the way through. Uh, don't let the learned hopelessness um, get to you. Um, <clears throat> it's um, all the psyops or whatever. We really need to, to you know, to place our feet and um, to, to make this happen and stop believing all the bullshit that's around there. The, you know, the stories about where he's in Switzerland. Don't worry about him. He's in Switzerland. Like that's, no, come on. No. It's so like, harmful. Uh, yeah, so harmful. And when he, his lawyers and his mum and everyone, and, you know, the, uh, the president of Ecuador all, all are saying, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely in the embassy. Like, <laughs> come on. There's, there's no need to, to muddy the waters that way and to, uh, yeah, to, to bring us back into uh, inertia, into sleepiness. Yeah, as soon as we posted uh, the live links of the stream yesterday, the initial, the first response I saw from somebody was, oh, don't worry, he's not there. There's no need for this. And I, I didn't know if it was somebody who's misinformed or a troll, but in either case, it doesn't matter because it's just very, very damaging to the support that has to grow for WikiLeaks um, at this time. Right. So. yeah. Well, yeah, so. and it's not just the people who, who fervently believe that. It's people who are like, you know, and we're all busy with our lives. We don't have time to commit to, you know, all these things. Um, you know, we we need to, to, we only have so much energy and there's only so many things that we can commit to. And so someone who might be like um, thinking about, uh, you know, writing a letter or something about Assange, if they see a comment like that, uh, then they'll be like, oh, I don't even know. Ah, I'm confused. I'm confused. Oh, well, I, I, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it and see how it goes. When we need everyone's hands to be on deck right now. It's been two months. It's over 60 days, you know, he's been uh, silenced. Um, and to, even, you know, in terms of his health, his physical health, that's extremely dangerous, his uh, mental health as well. So Absolutely. I think Go on with that thought. I don't want to cut you off on that thought at all. Please go oh, ahead. No, I, I just think it's important that, like, you know, we, we, uh, we stop telling lies or spreading lies. You know, make sure that what you're saying um, has some basis in reality, that there are, you know, that there are actions that you can point to that are real, that, um, that show what you're, you're saying. You know, try and verify things as much as you can uh, and then just use, just use the truth. Like, even if um, it might feel more comfortable to think that, oh, maybe he's, he's okay, maybe Trump saves him or whatever. Like, no, come on. We've got to deal with reality here and we've got to deal with the facts that are at hand. So, yeah. Absolutely. That is a really great sentiment to leave it on because that's exactly what WikiLeaks does is it gives us just nothing but the facts. So, um, but thank you so much, Caitlin, for, for being with us and spending your time with us and speaking with this, with us about uh, Julian Assange WikiLeaks and about your journalism and the way in which uh, WikiLeaks has sort of impacted your journalism as well. So thank you so much for spending that time with us. I, I know that I appreciate it. I know our audience appreciates it because uh, they are just do, uh, doing nothing but praising uh, you and your work and WikiLeaks, of course, in chat. Uh, so thank you so much on behalf of all the viewers uh, for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for putting it on. And thank you for just being an amazing host. You and Susie have done such a great job of putting this together. It's really been fantastic. Like I said, it's been, it's been a real community effort. And I think um, it's had a lot of knock-on effects that will, um, that will be very uh, 
good for us in the future too. Very well, I, I think that I think it's just really important not to, and I know a lot of people mentioned this during the vigil. It's just so important not to let this story die. And I think that the the concept of this moving forward, if it has to, if if Assange remains gagged, so that this isn't like a one and done event, I think that is a is a crucial a crucial aspect of this. But right yeah well yeah yeah uh let's hope we never have to have a vigil before though exactly let's hope, let's hope that this is the last vigil we have to have uh for julian to be free <laughs> in any case i know that your your schedule is very busy so i will let you go and thank you again for joining us and i know that if we have another vigil that we'll see you again uh next time on the, on that if we have to so okay thank you thank you